Hi, Austin Davis with Trust My Mechanic here. You know, I get hundreds of email questions every week that I respond to, and it's summertime here in Houston, Texas, and very hot. And the majority of the emails I've been getting are about car overheating, engine overheating, and air conditioning. So I just want to help you guys out on some car overheating, just some simple things to rule out before you go to the mechanic, and it certainly will save you some time, hassle, and probably money if you'll spend just a little bit of time doing some research yourself before you go. So, first question I want to ask a customer is, okay, your, your car's overheating, are you having to add antifreeze regularly? The coolant overflow bottle where you add the antifreeze on my truck is over here. So is there antifreeze inside? And are, am I having to add some? Some cars have the radiator here on the top or it has the radiator cap. This one does not, it's over here. So no, I'm not having to add antifreeze. If I said yes, I'm having to add antifreeze, I would say, are you seeing a leak somewhere? So look under the ground. Antifreeze can be either green or a reddish color or really, really rusty. If you've had a leak for a while and you have a lot of rust in your, in your radiator, you'll have a big rusty leak on your driveway. So if you answered yes, I have to add antifreeze, I'd want to hook up what's called a pressure tester, a cooling system pressure tester. I'd take this cap off, hook on like a, uh, it's almost like a uh, bicycle tire inflator, and I would pump air into the system with this little handheld pump. The air would fill up the rest of the radiator and the, the hoses. This is the radiator hose, there's heater hoses back there. There's a bunch of gaskets and O-rings that can leak. And once I've applied pressure to the system, it'll pinpoint where the leak is. I'm either going to have a, got a passerby, I'm either going to have an exterior leak like at a hose, or I'm going to have an interior leak like a blown head gasket, something that's leaking antifreeze internally into the engine. But I'll know that because the pressure tester has a gauge on it. And when I pump it up to say 20 pounds, and I can sit there and watch it drop down to five, three, two, then I know there's a leak somewhere. So if you're not adding antifreeze and you don't have a leak, we've ruled that out. So we don't have an internal leak, we don't have an external leak. So the next question I want to ask you is when does the engine seem to overheat most? At idle or low speeds or while you're on the freeway? If you're experiencing an overheating problem at low speeds or at stoplights mostly, then I would look at the electric cooling fans on this truck, it doesn't have an electric cooling fan, but on my wife's car, it's very hard to see, but there are two electric cooling fan motors right behind the radiator, so there's the radiator. Back here behind the, the radiator is a fan here for the radiator and another electric fan over there for the air conditioner. Some cars have them in front, so open your hood and see where these fans are. Those fans have to be cycling on and off especially at idle and low speeds. So if you only really experience the only overheating problem at idle and low speeds, I would definitely lean towards those fans and make sure they're working and rule them off my list. Some people want to immediately go and replace the thermostat. Here's the upper radiator hose. And if you follow the upper radiator hose to the engine, you'll find where the thermostat is. And it's down there in that uh, housing. So that part comes off, take those bolts off, and inside is the thermostat. It's pretty much the same on any other car. Here's my wife's car. Follow the upper radiator hose to the engine. This is the thermostat housing. You take these bolts off and the thermostat's inside. Now rarely does a thermostat go bad. Is it possible? Sure, of course it's possible. But if the light goes out in your house, do you replace the switch or the light bulb? 90% of the time, maybe 100% of the time, it's the light bulb, not the switch. So don't jump to conclusions and replace the thermostat. I want to make sure that the upper radiator hose is hot. And if it's the engine's been running and the system is, is the temperature it should be, which is about 210 degrees, I should take a rag, not my bare hand, and I shouldn't really be able to squeeze this upper radiator hose very much when there's pressure on the system. This engine's cold, so I can squeeze it together. Incidentally, just I answered a question just this morning about when to replace radiator hoses. This radiator hose, if you look at these clamps, 
See the way that clamp is? They put that together with a, a pair of pliers, basically, and it snaps closed. They use these predominantly at the manufacturer, not in a replacement setting. You would throw these clamps away and replace them with a, a screw-type clamp. So if you see that type of clamp on your radiator hoses or any hose on your car, it pretty much tells you this is original to the vehicle. So in this case, these hoses really ought to be replaced because those are original. And at seven, seven years to ten years, you probably ought to replace them. Sometimes you can squeeze them and you'll hear this crunch and crack noise and that's rust and lime deposits and minerals that have built up inside and you're breaking it off. And that's a good telltale sign that it's time to replace it. Back on the cooling fan, this truck, most trucks and bigger SUVs will use a old fashioned fan blade. You can see there's a fan inside of this. This is the fan shroud. So the radiator's here, the fan's here, and that fan is run by a belt. So that belt runs the alternator, the power steering, the air conditioning, and that fan. So when the truck starts and the engine's running, that fan is turning and it's sucking air across the radiator. So not only is it blowing air onto the engine helping to cool it down, but it's taking the air from here and sucking it across the radiator, removing the heat that the radiator is building up. So the third complaint would be if your engine seems to be running hot at freeway speeds or higher speeds, then I would look at the radiator. Now this is the air conditioning condenser. It's a part of the air conditioner, but it basically looks like a little radiator. So if you can see, it has these lines here. In a radiator, that'd be full of coolant, full of antifreeze. And it would circle around here and come down here and kind of circle back and forth and has these fins inside the radiator. Well, this radiator over time will get plugged up with rust and mineral deposits and scale. You know, just like a, a pipe inside your home, if you cut open one of your water lines, you would see rust and deposits, kind of like an artery. It slowly begins to, to get restricted with uh, uh, cholesterol. So trying to flush out a radiator with a garden hose, you might be able to flush some of this out, but when you turn the vehicle off and all the deposits settle, they're gonna settle down here. Everything's gonna go to the bottom, and there's virtually no way to flush that out with a garden hose. So if you're traveling at 60 miles an hour and you notice I'm running hotter than I should and the engine's running hotter, you probably don't have enough airflow across the radiator or the coolant inside the radiator can't circulate fast enough because all the little arteries are clogged up and that'll require a new radiator. Um, I would also start with a pressure test. I pressure test every vehicle with an overheating complaint because I've been fooled many times thinking it was a radiator or a thermostat type problem and there's a small hose way at the back of the engine that's just barely leaking but that caused the overheating and the pressure test would rule that out. If you have your air conditioner on and you have a cooling fan, that cooling fan should be on every time the air conditioning compressor is on. So sometimes if you have an overheating problem while you're at idle, that electric fan has to be on, especially at idle, and you're putting more of a load on the engine as well when you're running the air conditioning compressor. So if you notice, my temperature gauge starts to go up a little as I'm sitting in traffic. Turn your air conditioner off first. What happens? Does it start to come back down? That would probably tell me either there could be an electric cooling fan problem, one of the fans isn't working, or it's just low on antifreeze. And taking that extra load off the engine brings the temperature down. If you really get into a problem and you're sitting in traffic and your car starts to overheat, turn the heater on. Inside the dash of your vehicle, if we follow these hoses, these are the heater hoses, so this is carrying hot antifreeze inside the dash of the car. And inside the dash is a small little radiator called a heater core. And if you're running the hot antifreeze into the, the dash of the car, you turn the fan on high and you're blowing air across that little heater core, it acts just like a small radiator and it should help you bring the temperature down where you can pull off on the side of the road and get some help without burning the motor up. If you run this engine, especially a Japanese, this is a Korean made vehicle, but 
run these smaller engines hot, it doesn't take much to really damage the engine. By the time the red warning light comes on the dash to tell you that it's overheating, you've pretty much already done the damage. That, that light is almost an afterthought. So, make sure whoever's doing your oil changes constantly checks the coolant level and fills it up. Make sure there's nothing blocking the radiator. I've seen a plastic bag get stuck in here before and that just diminishes the airflow that can get to the radiator. Sometimes a bunch of bur uh, bees and, and stuff will get slammed in, in here and stop the airflow. Your oil change guys should be looking at that stuff. Also asking about the heater and radiator hoses. This one $20 hose, if it decides to rupture while you're on the road, you, you need a wrecker. So replace them before they leak and before they break. And replace them all. Because this hose, which is much harder to get to, and probably costs more money than this easy to get to inexpensive upper radiator hose, this is going to be the one that's going to break, <laughs> not this one. It's kind of Murphy's Law. The ones that are the hardest to get to and cost the most, those are the ones that are going to leave you stranded. So if you're replacing your hoses, replace them all, not just the upper and lower radiator hoses, which are easier and cheaper. So make sure you talk to your mechanic about that too. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, try to give your mechanic as much information as you can. And as always, open your hood periodically yourself. Even if you're not mechanically inclined, you ought to be able to find something like that, which is uh, corrosion under my battery terminal. If you just quickly glanced at my battery terminal here, you say it's clean, it looks fine. And they usually have a cover over it because if you touch that with that ring, you'll lose a large portion of your skin, which I've done before. So don't wear anything metallic when you're messing with a battery. But that corrosion will leave me stranded. And we get more cars towed in on a wrecker for a loose battery cable or a dirty battery cable just like that than anything else. So save yourself from hassle of being late for work or stranded in the middle of nowhere at night and the cost of a wrecker. Tell your oil change guy to check that. I just had my oil change and he did not look at that. So he probably should be fired. Have a great day. See ya. Bye.